My friends, it is time. I welcome you to my second 100 days playthrough in 7 Days to Die. I thought with me doing this a second time it would be easier, but in fact there was quite a few more obstacles. Watch me fail and watch me grow, but mostly fail. And without further ado, I think it's time that I start killing thousands of zombies and restoring... Actually, no, there's no point to this game. Grab a drink, grab a snack, sit down and relax, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Oh boy. Here we are back at it. Let's go ahead and loot up the area, start our little quests in the top, make our way to the first trader, and that seems like a good plan for now. If I learned anything from my last playthrough, it's to complete the quests at the top right so I could gain access to the first trader. Let's craft a bedroll. Let's craft an axe. Wow, a survival game that gives you hints. All right, some arrows. Wow, the campfire looks different. Locate trader. Damn, that's far. How does that feel? Burnt forest. Scary level medium. My first piece of clothing. Look at me go. The hide residence three. It tells you the skull level and like how hard it is now. Oh, hello repair kits and a shovel. You don't realize how far two kilometers really is until you start walking it. And this took me over half of the day. So day one was a bust. Damn, you gave me a little concussiveness. And now I have an infection. I need to take antibiotics. And how do you recommend I get those? With a club? Why And the hell is this so far? And with a lot of patience, I finally made it to Joel's around 1900. Trader Joel's is now open. All right, might as well loot all of this. I will read this though. Forge steel. I didn't realize they completely overhauled the skill book readings. And once I found out, I kind of hated it at first, but it grew on me. <clears throat> Bruce craft or tap trap damn it when i should have been accepting a quest i wasted time selling stuff and got kicked out that sucks let's get like 25 of these crafting so i can at least set up for now i started building a tiny base right outside of joel's shop because i feel like that's the best starting location i still don't know if i'm gonna change the area of where my base is at but for now this is gonna do after completing my cube i had a spare moment so i started checking out all of the skills first Where's sexual Tyrannus? I mean, they took that out of the game. I may be wrong, but from what I can see, they took sexual Tyrannosaurus out of the game, which was one of the most overpowered skills in my opinion. So I'm kind of pissed. I guess I'm just going to put points into strength for now. And let's get on with day two. I still need to fight antibiotics. So Joel, you need to open up shop, brother. Dude, how do I miss these shots? The arrows are kind of hard to use. What? We'll go get the buried supplies. That seems like the easiest option for me right now. As you can see, when Joel's first opened, I took a quest because once you complete seven, you get a bicycle. And then seven more after that, you get a motorcycle. So you're damn straight. I'm going to complete these as fast as possible. That was really easy. After completing the quest and grabbing all of the loot, I headed back to Joel's to turn it in. And it's like he knew that I had an infection. Wait, what does this do? Oh, <gasps> yes. My infection is gone. Well, I've made it to day two halfway through, actually, and I'm still alive, so that's a plus. I'd say this playthrough is going a lot better than my last one. We didn't even know about traders until day eight. Unfortunately, this time around, though, it's going to take me a really long time to find a weapon, and I will be using a level one club for the first couple of days. Let's go! Steroids couldn't have come in more clutch. And a helmet. And a helmet. I can confirm that I'm out of stamina all the freaking time. Why is it so foggy? Tell me this. Why? Oh, gosh, that really is not good on the eyes. I need some blue light glasses. I made it back to Joel's with barely enough time to turn in the quest, sell some stuff, and grab some goodies before nighttime rolled around. Shotgun shells, water. Dude, I think I have to take the water. I'll take a job so it gives me something to do for now. And the last thing I did on day two was place down two storage boxes so I could organize some gear and not have to carry all of this around all the time. Day three, I got antsy and I was tired of just sitting at my base waiting for the sun to rise. So I headed to the next quest. It's got one skull. Luckily, these first couple of quests were super easy. There was only a couple of zombies to kill, but the loot reflected that. It was terrible. 
Some ammo, some boots. And on my way back to Joel, I finally figured out that the books were completely different and I got a little butt hurt. Pummel Pete, absolutely. Now, can I craft higher level clubs? I should be able to. No, what the hell? This game is completely different now. Is it, is it all just luck based? You just have to find books? It's not completely luck based. Even though you have to find the books to level up your skills, it still takes a lot of skill to play this game. Dude, I don't know if I can turn down this ammo. I also don't know why I found this so enjoyable, but it was pretty satisfying knowing that they changed the game and it was something so small, but it matters. Oh, that's cool. So when you add the attachments, it actually shows you now. Cute. For some reason, these digging missions just bug me the hell out. So there's just something about being in a hole, trapped, and if a zombie falls in, I don't know. It just scares me. I'm so stressed out right now. Get me the hell out of here. Still no weapon. Good gosh. These rewards were definitely a middle finger. They were pretty bad, but I picked the cocktails because it was a form of a weapon. You already know how it goes. I plan to have a relaxing night and just boil water on my campfire, but then I get bored. So at the beginning of day four, I headed out. I see you, man. I see you. Don't worry. Okay, fine. I'll kill you. Harvesting tool crafting. I like that. I really wanted a pickaxe, but I can't craft one until I have harvesting tools level 11 And that's how all other weapons and armor work in the past All you had to do was find a blueprint for it So I'll let you know late game whether it's easier or harder to do these things These tier 1 POIs feel like a complete waste of my time. It is day 4 So Joel will have a new inventory. Hopefully he has some type of weapon for me. Honestly, I probably take that Oh, we have a pipe rifle and a pistol. I might just have to take that. Yes, sir, I'm buying that. I also bought the pipe rifle. I wanted to be able to utilize two different types of ammo if I ran out of either one. With that being said, my next plan of attack for the day was crafting a forge. And the only thing I was missing was leather, which seems really hard to come by right now. That could be the move. Where, where did you drop it is the question way over there i'll hit that on the way back late game i feel like the supply drops aren't amazing but this early could be huge for me ah oh i have to light it first that's cute i feel like that's just a major waste of time and i'm gonna get nowhere all right time to start the quest i think i'm going with minor 69er because i'm going to be able to craft a pickaxe soon All right, Spears still sucks. Damn, it really sucks. So what's this place looking like? Ammo. Oh, okay. Please tell me I could pick this lock. If not, I'm going to be here for a long time. And so it begins. All that for a pipe of ton and some money. I can craft wrenches now? That's easy. I have all that at home. Oh gosh, it's almost nighttime. Let's pull out the good old pistol. Oh, 60 shotgun shells. That's pretty solid. Armor pocket mod schematic. So that allows me to craft them. I think I take the ammo. This should be my last quest until I can get to my bicycle. You know what I just noticed? You don't get cans from eating food anymore and you don't get empty water jars from drinking water anymore. On my way to my next quest, I accidentally found a deer, which is what I needed to craft a forge. <gasps> Wow, I actually hit that. Please give me the leather. Six. Okay. So I need to kill one more deer if I have any hopes of crafting this forge. Speaking of... Let's go! There's my 10 leather, baby! Day five, I took a detour to go get the supply drop because I noticed it was closer. Honestly, I'm just hoping it's a bunch of books. Pipe rifle. T. A wrench! What's in this bundle? Improves workstation crafting. Well, my beautiful people, we are on day five and I have not died a single time, which is a first. Knowing this was my last quest until I got the bicycle made me speed up a little bit instead of looting every single thing I saw. A weapons bag, please. 
Let's go. I have a friggin' pipe machine gun on day five. Things were looking up for me and I was feeling great. So it was time for me to sprint all the way back to Joel's and grab my first vehicle. Hunter mod, gunpowder, structural brace mod, nine millimeter ammo. Yes, give me my bicycle. I just realized that two more days is hard day. Shouldn't be too bad for our first go. Let's go, baby. I got a forge. That's a big boy. It looks completely different. All right, I need to... No! I didn't mean to do that! Knowing that horde day was right around the corner, I decided to spend the rest of day five working on my base. And on the morning of day six, I finished... Well, somewhat finished my base. Let me in! infested clear i wanted to focus on getting joel's quest tiers as high as possible at the moment because higher tier means better loot so i took my first tier 2 quest which didn't prove to be too difficult i ran the entire house killing zombies and looting everything i saw and before i knew it i made it to the end and grabbed my gear at the moment i wasn't even worried about horde days because days 7 and 14 are super simple what i wanted to do is build up all of my gear enough to be able to take on higher tier pois iron pickaxe Oh gosh, man. The fact that I haven't even found all 11 books to be able to even unlock the pickaxe and I have one means I can farm iron and all of the other goodies. Oh, is this throwing me in the snow biome? What does that mean? What is the difference between orange and red? Little did I know the infested clears were a lot harder than the normal ones. Oh my God. Okay. What have I done? I'm backing myself into a corner, but it could work. I didn't realize it was going to be that tough. Day seven, I worked my way through the rest of the house, killing zombies and fighting for my life. Good gosh, man. This house was hard. What is this? Find more junk and loot, which means higher quantity. Dude, I have found so many of those medical books. Look, 14 out of 75. Oh, a tier 5 pipe rifle? I will gladly take that. Sneaking over trash makes no sound sure. We got here. Improved salvage tool crafting skill. So wrenches, I'm assuming. Oh, baby, the ammo. I cannot believe that actually worked out. The, that, the beginning of that house was terrifying. Quests are starting to feel worth it. When you get into the higher tiers of quest lines, you get so much better of gear. Like, I feel like I can use this stuff. So, unfortunately... I don't have many rounds for this, so Horde Knight is going to be my pipe pistol only. I hate these type of quest rewards because I feel like I can never make the correct decision, but I ended up just taking the forged steel. So let me get my, I just bought a lantern. See what this does for me. I can place it on the wall. Interesting. Then right there it goes. It's so silly. Why doesn't it just hang on the wall? I guess I could craft a pipe shotgun for backup because I have a crap load of shotgun shells. Since I was only a few moments away from Horde Knights, I wanted to finish up a couple of things on my base, like adding bars to the ceiling and improving the foundation to cobblestone because it needs to be a little bit stronger. Wow, that gives you a lot. That's like a ton of iron. Being able to gather iron like this, this early in the game was huge for me. I don't think I'm falling short on iron anytime soon, guys. The last thing I wanted to go out and do before Horde Knight started is check the supply crate that was pretty close to me. What you got for me? Knuckles, red tea, potatoes, 100 wood. That's huge, actually. Damn, that saves me so much time. Getting those wood cubes was awesome because they can be turned into any shape and I don't have to upgrade them from the base foundations. So after adding bars to my roof in case vultures wanted to kill me, I added an iron hatch for the zombie walkway and contemplated life for a couple of seconds. Horde Knight was here. I'm ready. Let's do this. We'll start it off slow. Make sure all my guns are loaded. That might help. After witnessing this Horde Knight versus my first playthrough ever, me and James would have been screwed. All we did was go on top of a roof thinking that that would work, and it actually did. We only saw like two zombies the entire Horde Knight, but this? Nah, we would have been done. We only had spears and a club. But with 100 hours under my belt, I'm feeling a little bit better about my situation right now. Brother, 
birds are flying! Yeah! Hold on, gotta reload. Why did you just fall off like that? Are you stupid? Having guns on my first hard night is pretty nice. Wait, that was such a big buildup for nothing. It's just over? While I check my loot bags, I really wanted that to be more. I mean, I know it's only the first horde day, but still. The skies were blood red. The thunder was roaring, but there was no more zombies. So I decided to dig a hole because I need clay. Clay and iron makes forged iron. It should be self-explanatory, but yeah, I spent some time digging. I used all of my leftover clay to make cobblestone because that's also necessary for my progression, making my base stronger, ETC. Oh yeah, by the way, it's day eight. After doing some thinking i decided to change my build completely away from clubs and go towards sledgehammers i mean this game still looks ugly right but is it just me or did the graphics get better no no it's still ugly seven points available let's get our last pack mule have a full inventory 69er we'll put one point into Maybe two. Skull Crusher we want for sure. After leveling up, I started running another quest because after the next seven, I get a motorcycle and I've already completed two. So five more and your boy's gonna be flying balls down the road. I think we're just gonna go in hard with the sledgehammer. Wow, it takes virtually no stamina to swing this thing. I love it. That looks like it's gonna hurt me. Repair kits, love it. Does that not look like it's gonna hurt me? Yep. Sledgehammer OP. Why did it just get so dark in here? What the hell? There we go. Now I can see again. Shut up. Oh my god! After killing all of the zombies, I found the White River water supplies and I also had to get burned by fire yet again. That's a good way to die. Oh. 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 Why does that catch me on fire? Bob's boars and what the hell am I stuck on? Oh! What have I done? Here we are on day nine with me running yet again another quest. And unfortunately, it has to be like this. The first 10 days or so, you're catching your footing, you're learning all of the new stuff about the game, and it just takes time. Next episode, I'm definitely gonna run some crazier POIs, and I got a special present for you as well. Time to grab my loot and get the hell out of here. I think also once I get all of these quests done and get my motorcycle, it'll be more enticing for me to leave my city and go venture out further because number one, it doesn't take stamina. Two, it is a lot faster. And finally, it has a lot of storage. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna get that bad boy and we're gonna go on a crazy adventure. You know what I just realized? There's holes in my roof, so it doesn't keep me warm. And now I'm wet. Ooh, the fire axe. Ah, yep. Forge crafting speed by 50%. Yes, why wouldn't I? I'm not sure if it's true, but I feel like I just got really lucky finding that anvil at Joel's shop for super cheap. Anyways, let's find some buried treasure and soon be on day 10. Let's just one shot's dirt. Let's go. That's so much better. Sledgehammer might be my new favorite thing. Okay, that was stupid. I had no stamina. Hello. Oh, that's a lot. Go, 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 go. Iron gloves. That's pretty. Ooh. Ooh. I guess it's kind of cool being able to find books to upgrade the tier of craftable items, though I still can't confidently say that I love it that way. But I don't know. Huh. Takes quite a bit more stamina to use this, but it hits hard. It swings a lot slower than the stone sledgehammer. A tear tick. Uh, 
Did I just double whammy that? I'm excited to see how different this whole playthrough is for me because I've only ever actually played this game with another teammate. Now, I'll I can't it. ask for help if I'm getting swarmed. I can't have my teammate craft something for me if I don't have the materials. I need to start using beer. I forget it's a thaw. Wow, the loot's getting good. With all of that being said, I think we're going to find out very quick how bad I really am at seven days to die. Since it is nighttime and I have nothing to do, I can go ahead and start upgrading stuff to cobblestone. I need to work on this. It's a work in progress. I'll get there. I'll be honest with you guys. It's very hard for me to be patient and just take this game a day at a time instead of just rushing into the higher tier POIs trying to get better loot. I so badly just want to say screw it and take my tier three and four pipe guns into the Higashi Tower, the Dishong Tower, the house on the hill, whatever it may be, and just test my luck. But then moments like this oh so quickly remind me that I am not ready. I don't have the ammo nor the firepower or the gear to be doing anything wild right now. So... Sizen, just be patient. That's good. Hammer's also good. Oh, man. Like, ammo's cool, but I think I'm gonna take this. And finally, on to the last tier two quest before getting my motorcycle and upping the tier of Joel's quest. The past few quests have sent me into the snow. Tell me, this is this huge building right here. Interesting. Come here, Bubba's. Come here, Bubba's. Come on, buddy. But damn, y'all are walking at the same speed. Who do I kill first? Probably you. He still gets the hit on me. Got some books. Improve sledgehammer. Use and use. I can craft... Oh, that's stone. It's beautiful. I tell you, it's beautiful. Pile of books. Medical. Always freaking medical. I'm gonna have medical max. I'm tired of your damn half-eaten sandwiches. You know, oh, I like glue. These floors are very boring. All right, we're on the roof. There's gonna be vultures. I'm gonna be upset. Ow, ow, ow! No way, this just blew up in my face. Wow, that was scary. No! What the hell was all of that? This is my loot right here. Arrow rest mod. I'm gonna pass on that. We got ammo, we got a trigger group. We got some, take 50% less damage from collapsing mines. Okay, dude. Some motor oil, some there we go. And another one. Oil shell. I really don't need oil shell. I'll take the wheel. That loot was kind of poo-poo. No way, bro! What the hell? Shut up! Overalls? That might be the move, my friends. All right, let's go get my bike. No issues. Come on, just give me my bike. With our first seven tier one quests out of the way in episode one, I feel like all of the quests now are up in their games. They're getting a little bit tougher and the loot is reflecting that. Did I just kill a chicken? Bro, I ran over a chicken, I'm sorry. What the hell? That's like running over a squirrel in your car, except that feels a lot worse because I killed him with a bike. Ah! That time I don't feel bad because I did it on purpose. I just realized hard days in three days. Why? It just comes up on you so quick. I feel like there's a lot that I know about this game versus the first time I played, but there's still a lot that I'm uncertain of. So I'm asking you guys, if you could just please let me know down in the comments what the purpose of going to the other traders is. If I get the Joel next to my house's quests up to tier six or tier five or whatever the highest is, then what's the point of me going somewhere else and restarting? This grandpa's moonshine is kind of freaking insane. I might use that that going into like higher tier POIs. Yeah, I just gotta wait a little bit longer for Joel to open up. I have one row of stuff that I could still get, so I might go get this care package while I'm waiting. I'm hoping this is the last quest to get my motorbike, that way I don't have to use stamina to ride anymore. Yeah, see, joke's on me, that's not a thing anymore. They made it a lot harder. Let's just grab everything and then I'll check it out when I get home. I think I just saw a weapons box. Hey, buddy. Oh, damn. 
I already have a tier three. Archery, don't care about. Shotgun ammo, don't care about. Forge steel, I just already got a bunch. We're taking that. Let's go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They don't give you the freaking vehicles anymore. Random ranged mods. I'm just gonna take the damn mining helmet run. Oh, still tier two. Interesting. Let me use some of this stuff. Sledgehammer, absolutely. Blade crafting. A tier six mining helmet. <laughs> Please. Oh. No way. I think I have to start crafting my own vehicles, so I should probably keep my vehicle parts from now on. I'm just gonna start buying all books. Big hitters, clubs, yes. Armored up, improves armor crafting, yes. Mini bike chassis, vehicles level 20. They just made this a lot harder. I'm gonna be using a bicycle for a very long time. Storage box. So I just need nails and wood. Storage and space in general at my base were slim at the moment. So I needed to make more storage boxes for loot and eventually I would have to expand. I can't because I'm an idiot and I didn't do a named writable storage box, which costs the exact same. <gasps> I'm so stupid. I spent the entire evening just organizing my base because there's no better feeling of knowing where everything is whenever you need it. Why are you dropping me in tier one? This is easy stuff. I hope. Kind of scared, actually. Sizen, why aren't you using your melee weapons and conserving your ammo? Because I want to have fun, okay? Don't ask me. Is that it? It's just easy with good guns? On these first few missions, the loot definitely felt repetitive, but I don't know if that's just an early game thing and if it'll change once I start getting into the higher tier quests. Okay. Floor is breaking out from underneath. Oh, let's just drop in. That's why I shouldn't have done this. Okay. All right. That was pretty smooth. Look at this cash, man. Bada bing. Please give me something. Oh, the pipe rifles, man. I don't want all these pipe rifles. This is a little scary. I'm not gonna lie. What the hell? There's a booger? I just don't have any room for freaking inventory. My biggest issue right now was inventory size, like you heard me say. I couldn't run more than one POI or one quest without having to go all the way back home to drop off gear. I'm gonna take the 762. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on. We're on tier threes now. My main goal at the moment was getting a vehicle. That was it. Something other than a bicycle that didn't cost stamina and had a lot more room for storage. So if I have to run quests every single day until I get there, I will do that. Well, let's see what it is. Also, the first time I ever played this game, I didn't play on Navis Gain. It was a randomly generated world. So all of these buildings and POIs are completely different to me. I haven't seen any of these. Oh, Mega Crush! I just found Mega Crush. That is so solid. I'm scared. Why is there a zombie bear? Damn, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I could definitely tell I was running tier threes now. It was almost like they were trying to push a little bit better loot my way. Tier six bone knife. What we, Grandpa's learning elixir. This is actually a pretty decent cache. Oh my goodness. And after killing the last bit of zombies on the Ooh. roof, I'd be on my way home. Pops pawn shop. That could be huge. Or at least I thought I'd be on my way home until I found a pawn shop. So I guess it's time to run this as well. Just how do I get in? No, wait. Whoa, why is it dark? Oh, that's where the mining helmet's good, huh? Just brings the fear level way higher. I'm ready. 
I'm ready. There is just something so satisfying about doming these zombies with a sledgehammer. Did I just like triple whammy all of those? There's a gun safe. There's so much stuff in here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to get this first try? I love it. Improves assault rifle crafting. Don't want the damn knuckle. That was a waste. I have like no more room for loot. I need to go. My bicycle's full. My inventory's full. That was a good haul. With Horde Day just one day away, I had to go home, organize, and start working on my base just a little bit throughout the night until I could run my next quest. Oh, I have a level up. I have four points. Let's go strength. Minor 69er can now be maxed. Might just get a skull crusher, honestly. All right, minor 69ers maxed out. We just got to get to strength to 10, and then I can get sledgehammers up another level. Steel pickaxe, what? Well, like everyone said, I'm an idiot, and I maxed out pack mules, so the armored pocket mods are no... I don't need those. The steel pickaxe, I will absolutely take. That pickaxe will be the next best thing I use all the way up until I get an auger, which is going to be super late game. But for now, I'm feeling great. But your stuff did restock, so let's go ahead and look at this real quick. As per usual, I bought all of his books, hoping that he had the vehicle ones every time he restocked, and he didn't. So this sucks. That could be good, because then I could have five extra points that I didn't throw into pack mule. Before going out on my next adventure, I wanted to get a bunch of cobblestone rocks going so I could up upgrade my base fully before Horde Night. That's gonna be tough. Gyrocopter level 100. I don't know how I'm gonna find all these vehicle books. I need 14 vehicle books before I can even craft a mini bike. Did it just throw me back in this town? Am I gonna run something I just ran? All the one shots. I'm confused. Why does this one feel so bad? What is hobo stew? Damn, that offers a lot. Oh! <laughs> I was scared for only a moment. It's okay. This quest started me off in the bakery, but then threw me into the pawn shop. So I'm going to run through this because you guys just saw it. There it is. Oh, the things are getting better. Burning shaft ball! What? Red dye and a paintbrush. Money. That was a pretty successful run. I'm feeling really good about the loot I've been getting lately. My next plan was to go home and craft a workbench because that opens a lot of doors for me. I got cobblestone so I can start upgrading base, but I think what I want to do is break this out. And I want to extend. I wonder, can I put this? I can. I have a flaming sledgehammer. All right, let's start upgrading. we go that makes it feel a little bit more open i'm gonna chop down some trees keep working on my base until joel opens up and then i'm gonna go get that supply crate after i turn on my quest now that books are so crucial to my game those supply crates are not gonna go unnoticed since i was extending my base i thought maybe i could make something a little bit more unique this time around and use all of the shapes that they offer in this game but it's a little bit difficult. And out of everything, the best thing I could come up with was these little circular windows. I promise you by the end of this, I will have tested out all of these shapes, if not most of them, to make a better looking base. There we go, we got some cool elements here. Damn, I need more wood. Okay, let's just go to Joel real quick. We'll finish this later. I don't think I have time to run another quest because it's day 14, Horde Nights around the corner. Robotic Sledge, magazine bundle. Damn it. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the magazine bundle. Kinda wanna die this. That didn't do crap. It just made the handle and the I wanted the whole thing to be blood red. I need to hit a couple trees on the way back. That way I could at least close in my base and finish it before horde night. Oh hello. Hello, I found an armor bundle, a magazine bundle. I found some yucca juice. All right, well, the rest of my time until Horde Night has to be spent chopping down trees and finishing up my base. Let's open these. Wow. 
And we got a workbench, and our base is done for now. The last thing I wanted to do before zombies start showing up at my front door was upgrade everything that I could to cobblestone for better protection. If zombies break my foundation and my base falls, you will hear a grown man cry, I promise. Okay, that should be good for now. I want to upgrade these bars too. All right, that's all I can do for now. All right, here we go. Wow, I feel like there is a lot more this time. Let's get it! This gun has the smallest clip size. We got this, we got this. This is easy stuff right here. I was hoping that man couldn't jump in here. Get off my hatch, bro. All right. Guys, we're doing pretty good. That was a good shot. That's two loot bags. I want to see more. That's a third. Is that everyone? I think we did it, guys. Vehicles! So that was four loot bags in total. Not bad. I normally drop some pretty decent stuff, at least ammo that replenishes me. I'm just confused on why they're attacking my damn... my stairs. Oh, I got that iron door now. Look at that. Look at that! Got a better pipe shotgun now. And then I have that workbench. Could place that somewhere. Seems like a good spot for it. I don't know exactly what a dew collector does for me. I wonder if it gets me like murky water and then I can boil that into water. I can craft repair kits now. Super easy to craft those. That's nice. All right, I have a quest I need to get to, so let's get that going. As much as I would like to explore further and further out, go to the desert, go further into the snow, wasteland, etc. It's very hard for me to be motivated to go out further with just a bicycle. I don't have much storage and it's really, really slow. Oh, I've been wanting to run this place. I need to repair this real quick. This place doesn't look too bad, but I guess I'll find out very soon. Bye bye. What's the point? What's the point? Who were you? Where did you come from that scared me? Uh, craft basic resources like ore, stone, and wood into more compact stacks that are easier to carry. That's really cool. Wowzers. I'm gonna be able to craft some crazy sledgehammers soon. Let's let's get some. Yeah, absolutely. Let's use that. I always made sure that anytime I saw tech, I broke it down because the pipes are super useful, the iron I could care less about, but also the electrical parts are pretty damn good. A lot of stuff in here. I am absolutely breaking all of this down. More technology. Oh, I did not plan on being here this long. So good. Drum magazine. Iron knuckles. 
Okay. Vehicles! It seems like each time I go out on an adventure or a quest now, I'm finding at least one vehicle book, which is huge. Unfortunately, it won't be now, but next episode, I will definitely have that mini bike and we can go a lot further. Let's turn this in before Joel closes up, grab another quest, that way we can run it during the night. Stay efficient, my friends. Stay efficient. Steel leg armor, that's super good, but I need the magazines. That's fine. We could always switch that over to something else that we want. How much does that add to my magazine size, though? 15 rounds? Okay, this thing's a little bit more usable. I don't know if you get a lot of magazines for whatever area you're putting skill points into, or if it just happens to be that I'm lucky getting all of these freaking sledgehammer books. That's six, four. I need four more skill points so I can get strength up to level 10. Bro, honestly, I make the best fried rice in the world. This is seriously unmatched. You know, lunch breaks just be hitting different. All right, now I can go. Oh, this is the place that I've been thinking about running for a long time. It finally brought me here. The Bob's Boars, whatever the hell. See if they got mail. I could bring them some mail. Sledgies. I knew nothing about this place. And let's just say things were about to get weird. Ain't no way, bro. I know there's going to be dogs back here. There's a boar. There's an actual boar. I, I should have known. This man is a creep stain. He's just hoarding boars to kill people. I can go underground. This place has more to it than it looks. That's so cool. I'm scared. There's just boars everywhere. We, we've diverted from zombies and just letting boars take over the world. I'm pretty sure I only saw one or two zombies in this entire house. The rest was legit boars. I don't respect you. Stop hitting me. Ew, you creepy. This house is stressing me out because there's not a lot of zombies and it's throwing me off. And after doing some Destiny 2 jumping puzzles, I ended up here. Oh, my goodness. Man is cooking up some dangerous stuff in here. This is a puzzle and I don't like puzzles. Okay, whatever. That should not have figured that out myself. Reading this recipe, plant these seeds on a craftable farm. Blah, blah, blah. When harvested, there is a 50% chance to get a seed back from... What is this stuff? Super corn? What on earth is super corn? And where is the end of this house? Let's see what it is. Oh my gosh, this man was breeding up some crazy mutated corn. No, I ain't ready. All right, fine. I guess I have to do it. Man, what have I gotten myself into? Bro, what in God's creation? Are you kidding me? <coughs> Absolutely not. What the hell does super corn do? Does it help me beat him? Or did he feed this guy super corn and that's why he looks like that? All right. Man just took 15 bullets to the dome. What the hell? He was breeding a super pig. Still haven't gotten the end loot for this entire place. Okay, well, there it is. Is that really it? I'm not gonna lie, for the buildup that there was, and for everything that I just had to go through, the loot was not worth it. Oh, they were in here! <laughs> Perfect! And since I'm an actual idiot, I walked all the way home, because for some reason, I had it in my mind that I had to buy a new bicycle instead of repairing it. <sighs> Don't think I take the double barrel, I think I take this. And with the amount of sledgehammer books I've been finding, I was now able to craft tier 5s, but it was a little bit expensive. Holy crap! It's a little expensive on the forged iron there, bud. I don't know what's better, a tier one steel sledgehammer or a tier five iron sledgehammer, but I think I might go with the tier five iron. That takes five minutes. All right, I'll get that when I come back home. I think my least favorite thing about Alpha 21 is how important books are because Joel offers me some pretty decent weapons and armor. But I feel like I can't take it because all I need to do is grind out books until I can craft everything myself. Wow. All right, here we go. Oh, 
That was fun. That scared me. Okay, there's my supplies. Now I just have to clear the rest of this area. What the hell? No way. Where's the damn bird? All right, let's use some meds. Fun stuff. Sweet. Oh, hello. Steel sledgehammer. Kind of worth it. All right, goodbye. I go home now. Even though the next horde day wouldn't be in this episode, I still had to grind for it because it would be the very first day I play in episode three. As soon as I log on, I'm going to have to kill a bunch of zombies. I'm not going to get much time for preparation, so I have to be smart and kind of do that now. Shotgun, yes. Honey, yes. All right. It's looking good for me. He doesn't restock until day 19. I really need vehicle books. I think I'm only up to like level nine. And I need to be at 20. I've never farmed in this game, but I guess I'm about to find out what it's about. Cool. How do I water it? Oh. Oh. After getting my high-powered 762, I was debating on whether or not I should go run this next quest or work on my base. And I think I came to the conclusion. Should I spend some time on my base? I think so. And that's exactly what I did for the rest of day 17. I upgraded what I could to cobblestone, and then I spent the rest of my time digging for more clay. I guess I should explain why I'm going so hard on my base this early on. It's because from here on out, I'm upping the zombie counts each horde night. Day 18, first thing, I had finished what I wanted to on my base for the time being, and now I was going to go run this quest. How hard is this? Not that hard, actually. I definitely jinxed myself with this one. No. Infested clear easy? I think so. Oh, 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 oh. That's a lot of zombies, my friends. Get the hell out of here. I wish there was some type of katana in this game where I could just slice and dice all these zombies quickly because using a sledgehammer against this many just isn't reasonable. That was a little scary. This is my cash. This is it. Just replenish the ammo I just blew. Okay, never mind. That's a lot. Good gosh. Holy hell. No way. The plan was to go back, turn in this quest, run one more, finish my base, and find the next trader all within the next two days. Let's see if we can get it done. Vehicles, yes. First things first, let's go ahead and finish up this base. I want to get everything converted to cobblestone and then use the little bit of concrete I have on the foundation of my base. Which brings us to the end of day 18 when I headed out for my quest. I forgot this is infested. This is going to be a little bit harder. Guess what I just unlocked? Skull Crusher, level five. Oh crap, I almost fell. I think at first glance, these infested clears are a little tough, but once you run them enough and you get the gist of it, it's actually pretty simple. Funnel zombies, use doors to your advantage, you got the win. See, I say all of that, but then something so simple as getting stuck and not being able to jump Owie! can almost kill you. But after just one small hiccup, I had gotten through the entire house fairly quick and got all my loot. I'm hoping I can get the, the whole seven quest quest line thing. 
complete before we hit day 20 and, and end the episode. I just want to see what he gives me or if it's just I don't get vehicles from him anymore and I just straight up have to craft them. But to my surprise, when Joel opened up shop, he gifted me this. What we got here? Lever action rifle. That's kind of cool, actually. I think I'm going to take the ammo. Oh, sweet. Pump shotgun bundle. Motorcycle parts. No way. No way. Am I about to get a motorcycle before I even get a freaking what? It's these that I haven't unlocked, but as long as I have those parts, I can craft the motorcycle. Say less, bro. I'm taking it. All right, let's open it up and see what we get. Motorcycle handlebars, are you kidding me? I think, honestly, that was the most successful fail I've ever had. I got the parts bundle, but I didn't get the chassis. So now I have to get lucky and get another bundle or I'm screwed. That stuff is actually growing. I didn't think it would. After finishing up everything at home, I started heading towards the next trader so I could open some new doors. I made sure on the way though that I broke down every vehicle I saw so I could sell all of the parts for a lot of cash. Because before heading out, I saw Joel's inventory and he had an AK-47 that was tier four and I'm definitely buying that. AK-47. <laughs> no way. On my way to the next trader, I saw this. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of lag just being here. Look at that rating. Just for you guys and for the memes, I'm gonna run that Shamway in episode three, whether I'm ready or not. But enough of the blabber. By the end of day 19, I finally found the next trader. Did they make new traders? Let me go saw all this stuff real quick. Ah, right, yeah, this is uh, has to be new. It looks like Jess. I didn't end up staying for long because it was almost day 20 and I don't wanna be out at nighttime. So I had to floor it all the way back home. Got two more vehicle books that I forgot about. So I only need three more and then I can craft a mini bike. Well, I just need this man to open up shop so I can buy this AK-47. Let me go ahead and pull the mods, whatever I have on this off. The excitement was real. I sat outside of Joel's shop all the way until morning when he opened up so I could buy this AK. AK-47, you're mine. Let's go, baby. Throw those on in the green dye. Look at it's got a cute little green camo on the freaking what? How many rounds? 60. 60 rounds in the freaking magazine because of the drum. Oh, tier four, huh? Yes, you read that correctly. I am now on tier four quests and it's only day 20. So I'm gonna head to this next one and eventually get there. I'm an absolute menace with a sledgehammer. I don't even think it's worth it searching these cupboards anymore. Bring it, brother. These higher tier quests weren't getting much harder. They just took a lot longer. So finishing two in a day isn't a thing anymore. I'm a little scared. Ooh, hello. Sure. Oh, uh, this normal corn seed. Still don't know what super corn is. Damn! If I could just find books like that all the time, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> He's so cute, dude. I seriously feel like the devs use pictures of their own pets for this stuff. This house is mad freaky. That freaked me the hell out. Yes, I only need two more vehicle books now. As you heard me say, two more books and I would be able to craft the mini bike. And that was going to be extreme for my game. It's already day 20. I've grinded a lot and I still didn't have this bike. Three episodes later, I'm getting this damn thing. Oh, look at that is a cash right there. My goodness. Oh! Dude, really? And just like that, day 20 was coming to a close. So I'm gonna go ahead and loot up this entire cache and then we're gonna make our way back home. And while I'm heading home, I figured I'd tell you that today I finally decided I was gonna go visit the new trader. Even if it starts me out on tier one quests, that at least branches me out further than my little area that I'm stuck in right now. I am not gonna have enough time to turn this in. Man closes early, opens late. Why do I even give you my business? So since Joel was closed, I couldn't turn in my quest or pick up a new one. I decided that I would just spend the entire night digging and mining for iron. I had more forged iron right now than I would probably ever need in this entire playthrough. But the thing is, is I was preparing for the future when I need to make forged steel. Well, it's day 21. It's a new day, new me. Let's go see what Joel has. Lever action, sawed off shotgun, steel pickaxe, level five. Good God. Yeah, I'm taking that. 
I know someone said, and I thought it was this way, but I know someone said that if I put points into a certain area that I am more likely to find books for that. So let's just do this and see if I find vehicle books more often. Oh my gosh, Horde Day is tonight. I have to hurry. Luckily, this place is close. Hopefully I can just sprint through it real quick. I don't know how I spaced on it, but it's Horde Day and I completely forgot. So I really have to hurry. Hello, my friends. Looks like there's a couple of animals in the yard. I don't know what that is all about. I hate dogs so much. That's the first time I think I've ever one shot one of those chicks. For being a tier four quest, this place was extremely small. So I was wondering what the catch was. You guys should let me know in the comments what build I should do after this one because this one's already maxed and I feel like I should branch out. Like, is there anything better than the sledgehammer? I feel like there's not. Remember how I was asking what the catch was? Holy crap! That was a little scary. Uh, ho, ho, ho. No, in all reality, this quest was actually fairly easy and it was a blessing in disguise because I need to book it back home. Vehicle, yes! I can craft the damn mini bike now. Let's go. I gotta say, at this point in the game, I'm having a lot more fun. It's hard when you play Seven Days to Die at the beginning because nothing feels worth it and like you're not going anywhere. Go turn in this quest, sell some stuff, buy some ammo, and get this going. A ratchet, a tier six lever action. Why is he pushing this lever action on me so much? I'm just gonna take the lever action. Like I mentioned in episode two, every single horde night, I'm gonna up the zombie count. So now it's gonna be 12 zombies. Next time it'll be 16 and it'll keep going up until I cap it out at 64. I'm gonna see if I can conserve some ammo here. There's a lot of enemies. Up in the zombie count is making a difference here. All right, all right. whoa, 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 how did you get inside? It's getting a little piled up here. Damn, he spit on me! All right, let's pull out the big guns. They just keep coming this time, man. They're not stopping. What are you attacking? Please tell me. Please lighten up. I don't have the ammo for this. Guess it's time for the sledgehammer. Can you stop it? Sledgehammer is so good. Oh yeah, that's not good. Come on, hurry. Oh. It's gonna take it all, man. Look at all those bags. There's so many this time. As you guys just witnessed, from me upping the zombie count only to 12 made a huge difference. My weapons couldn't last. I used all of my 762 ammo. So I'm definitely gonna have to come up with a game plan to be able to do this solo. Anyways, when the dust settled, I checked out what I had and what I didn't have for the mini bike, and all I was missing was mechanical parts. So I headed to my next quest on my bicycle for the last time. I was gonna break down every car I saw on the way 
That way, when I got back, I'd be able to craft the mini bike and I could ditch this stupid thing. But before we start this quest, I just want to tell you that this broke me down. It took so freaking long. The first part of this building goes quick. You follow the main route, boom, you're done. It's the second part where the whole building is flipped on its side and <laughs> yeah, I'll just let you see for yourselves. After fighting for my life and thinking I was done, I finally made it to the rooftops just to find out that I was nowhere near finished. No way, I have to search that entire building too. It was confusing because the whole building was tilted on its side. There was so many corridors, so many hallways, rooms. This place is never ending. I could really be in here all day. Keep in mind, I arrived at this quest at 11 o'clock on day 22. Now pay attention to when I leave. Where's the last zombies? I followed the designated route that the game wanted me to. I found the loot cache before finding the last couple of zombies that I needed to kill. Use, replenish some lockpicks money this 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 full inventory now i gotta find the rest of these zombies before i can leave what the hell and after backtracking it wasn't until day 23 that the game finally told me where the last zombie was oh it's showing me where the last one is perfect with the last zombie dying around 2 30 a.m it took me almost a full day to do this nice we're done that took way too long the only good part about it is i'd be returning home right about when joel opens up shop when i got back before going to visit joel i crafted the handlebars and the chassis for the mini bike so the last thing to do is wait two minutes and i've got it since i've never used a steel sledgehammer before i was iffy on taking it but little did i know it was twice as good as the one i was using whether it was good or not i was still gonna take it because everything else available wasn't what I wanted. When I was crafting the mini bike, I also made a dew collector because number one, I've never made one before. And number two, I think it gives me free water. I wonder what it gives me once it fills up just like a jar of water. Even though I did a full 100 days playthrough of this game already, I still didn't really know what I should level up. So for now, I did lucky looter and a couple points into perception. And it's time for the thing I've been grinding for this whole game. Oh, man. Let's see the storage. Storage is way better. We spent 23 days grinding for this thing. That slightly did not feel good. Judy Witch. I'm kind of going to speed through the next couple of quests and days because they were pretty simple. I didn't venture out much. All I did was run quests, go home, turn them in, rinse and repeat for the next couple of days. With this quest finished, I hurried back to Joel so I could turn it in and grab another that I could run through the night. I'm kind of in this awkward phase right now where tier four rewards are kind of bad. Most of the time, I just took these magazine bundles because that's going to help me progress the most. But as of right now, my only goal is getting to tier five. Before heading out on my next quest, I moved my my little farm plots outside because number one it makes more sense and two if i want to expand it i have the room i also found out that i could craft an auger i guess i found 65 out of 70 harvesting books and as many of you know from my last playthrough that was my favorite thing ever but enough's been said it's day 24 and it's time to go speed run our next quest well one more thing i broke down some cars to try and get an engine for my auger and luckily i got it first try there's my engine. I absolutely steamrolled through this place. With my new tier 4 steel sledgehammer, I was just crushing enemies left and right without a chance of them even hurting me. I wasn't originally going to show me being stupid and blowing up all these mines, but I know you guys would probably Owie. wonder how my health got down to 80. Anyways, I took a couple of what I thought would be wrong turns and somehow ended up in the final loot room and everything was dead and I was already done. These quests were no doubt giving me a lot of ammo, which I appreciated. But damn it, brother, give me some good armor and some cool weapons. No way I'm about to have an auger. <laughs> I knew in the back of my mind that I was getting really close to unlocking that seventh questline reward, so it's grind time. Machete's gonna be no better than my club, so I think I take the armor. I love the auger so much. Look at the what the Joseph my God. <laughs> Here we are, my friends. Day 25. One quest away from my entire playthrough changing completely. Oh yeah, give me the money. This place wasn't tough at all. It was kind of cool because there was this little Narnia closet that I'm in right now where you open up the closet, there's a gun safe and then a ladder going upwards. That scared the crap out of me. The exploration aspect of this game is probably my favorite thing. You never know what kind of cool little passageway you're about to find. Oh. Literally one minute, I'm in a nice suburban house. Next thing I know, I'm in a crazy underground bunker. It's about to get crazy, I already know it.
Wow, there is a lot of loot here. That's a pretty quick one. What the hell is this? Upgrade your robotic drone's defense ability with this modification. Reduces damage. Wow. Military boots. Sit down, man. We're gonna go home real quick, turn in this quest, and day 26, I promise you, will be the craziest one yet. I wonder if after I max out a category with books, if it'll keep making me find them or if it'll take it off the board completely. 44 Magnum tier four, holy crap. I ended up taking the 44 Magnum, though I've never used it, and I would find out quickly that it's probably not a late game gun. But for the rest of day 25, I wanted to have a relaxing evening. I wanted to just upgrade my base and do some organizing, so enjoy. There's just something so relaxing and satisfying about upgrading your base. No zombies killing you, no shooting, no bullets flying. It's just calmness. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this day by farming and just relaxing because I promise you it's going to be the last chill day that I have in a long time. Later that evening, I started heading out on my next quest and I realized that I have no gasoline left to my name. What's in my bike is all I have. And unfortunately, I am nowhere near close to unlocking the chemistry table, which is how how I craft gasoline with oil shale. So for right now, it's breaking down cars and checking rusty barrels. And without those, I'm riding my bicycle again. <laughs> Anyways, it's time to run my last tier four quest. And boy, am I excited. With this being an infested clear, it was a little bit tougher than all the other ones because it had irradiated zombies and they were pretty tanky. But other than that, it went smooth. After fighting my way through the entire house, I was led to the barn, which was the next part. I killed a couple of zombies, made my way to the top and was greeted by this weird balance beam situation. Like, come on, just give me to the loot. Speaking of the loot, it was all the same as it has been this entire playthrough. A bunch of magazines, some ammo, a decent mod or two, that's it. But I'm done complaining. That was my last tier four quest. It's on to bigger and better things, my friends. All right, can I get a drum roll? Wait, hold on, I messed up. Let me take this crafting magazine bundle first and then the drum roll. Wait, what? What, a M60 and four by four parts? What do I take? What do I take? No way. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let me think about this. If I take the 4x4 parts bundle, like I did with the motorcycle, I could only get one part I need to craft it, but then be stuck with that part until I unlock the actual, like the rest of it, right? Or I take the M60 and I'm a complete god now. I think I'm gonna take the M60. All right, let me quickly open this. Wow, okay, a tier four M60, three assault rifle magazines, and 100 ammo. That's pretty solid. Before heading out to the next trader, I wanted to put my forge to work and give it something to do while I was gone. So I started making a lot of forged iron. Though I've already discovered this trader on my own, I still needed to complete the quest Joel gave me to open trade routes. So when I arrived, I talked with Jen, accepted a quest from her because originally I wanted to start getting her quest tiers up, but I don't think that really matters. As long as I can keep running the quests that Joel gives me, I'll be fine. I don't need to do quests for other people. So with that in mind, I figured that I would just finish this quest that I took from her, but not do any more because I had something else I wanted to do. I literally finished this entire tier one and about five minutes, but it's on to the thing that I promised you guys I would do last episode. Do you remember that Shamway Foods I passed by and said, hey, I'm definitely running this? Well, here we are. I'm probably not ready to do this on my own, but I'm going to try my hardest. I waited until day 27 to start this whole thing so I could say it's day 27 and I'm officially running Shamway Foods. The loot stage should be pretty good here because not only am I in the wasteland, but I'm also on a tier five POI and I'm pretty decent level right now. The last time I ran Shamway Foods was with my friend James in my last playthrough, and it took us an hour to complete it, so hopefully I can get through it a little bit quicker. Bro, I am straight up doming these zombies. Ah, uh, I'm so good. Something funky is going on right now. I remember being in here last time, and there was just an overrun. This, this is... Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, this isn't that many zombies. I'm seriously confused. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Hold on. Oh, no, I'm fine. I was gonna say, dude, like, oh, they're everywhere. 
No, 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 no. I need to heal. That's what happened last time. I was wondering when it was gonna... Okay. We're good. I'm fine. Just a little bit of a scare. Shamway Foods is no joke. These zombies hit hard. There's a lot of them, but the loot reflects it. There is some good stuff in here. Though I didn't want this to take forever, I also played it very patiently because I'm not trying to die. As I told you guys from the beginning, I want to make it to day 100 without dying a single time. As you can see, I'm not all the way to the end yet. Nowhere near it. This is the first room I found with loot, and it's already going very good. This right here is what 7 Days to Die is all about. It's getting to that late game POI action where there's just hordes of zombies but you're finding some crazy stuff. I'd say the hardest part about Shamway is knowing what to take and what to leave behind because I came here with a pretty empty inventory. I'm not even halfway through it yet and my, my inventory is almost completely full. I continued fighting my way through this place, scouring through every square inch that I could. Fighting through these higher tier places is oddly satisfying, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a montage. Okay, okay, I did the best I could. Don't be too hard on me in the comments now. Anyways, we're on to the next portion of Shamway, which is the rooftops. This whole POI is almost complete, so I'm gonna check this silo real quick, and then we're gonna get on with the hardest part. Here goes nothing. Oh, the floor drops out! Oh my gosh! I know I should pull out my gun, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm gonna fight through this with this sledgehammer. I'm so scared they're cornering me! Fight! Run. Maybe I should pull out my gun. I don't know who to hit first. Okay, I'm going for you guys. Just leave me alone. How have I not gotten hit yet? There's so many zombies in here. No way I just pulled this off. Okay, there's, there's a hit. I'm out of stamina, no! I have to pull out the guns. Come on me, bro! Yo, get put to- No, no! I- Alright, abrasion. Fight through it, baby. Damn, this thing mows! Alright, M60, I'm calling it the lawnmower from now on. After killing the last two zombies, the long-awaited loot was staring me down, and boy, did it look luscious. I was hoping that Shamway Foods wouldn't take as long as it did last time, and here we are with it taking a, a full day. I haven't gotten anything over the top yet. Like, I'm getting magazines like always, but... Man, I'm just hoping this huge chest to the right of me... Okay, there's- that's some good ammo. Damn, dude, my inventory is so full! I'm just hoping this chest to the right of me has something worthwhile. I will get in here one way or another. What's it gonna be? Ah, oh, no way. Okay. Damn it. I guess the tier six chest piece is super good. But uh, I just, I was so hoping I got an SMG, like honestly. Well, say what you guys will. I just can't confidently say that that was worth an hour of my time, but I guess I'm gonna head home now. On the morning of day 28, I returned to Jen's clinic to turn in my tier one quest before heading back to my actual house. You know, the best part of it all is I forgot that day 28 was horde day. So not only did I just spend so much time running Shamway, now I have to go home and start preparing for tonight! When I got back, there was only one thing to do, and that was to keep converting everything I could to concrete. Though it was far and few between, the only way I could get it right now was purchasing it from traders. I stopped for a minute to allocate some unused levels that I had, and I put them into advanced engineering because I thought, maybe, if I put points into that, I'll start getting more workbench books. The last thing I wanted to do before running Horde Night was go get this supply drop that just came in. I didn't even have enough gas in my bike to get to the next quest, so that was off the books for right now. Alrighty. Ooh, a little farming bundle. Workstation bundle. I'll take it. Honestly, I bet a bunch of people hate seeing those farming or seed bundles or whatever, but I kind of like the idea of growing my own plants and being able to craft recipes that I normally wouldn't do in other survival games. I'm telling you guys right now, by the end of this playthrough, I will have the most ridiculous farm you've ever seen in seven days to die. And a lot of it will be corn. After increasing the zombie counts, I reloaded all of my weapons and made sure I was ready to go for what was going to be a crazy night. I don't know why, 
But I have such a bad feeling about this Horde Knight. I don't necessarily want to even use this 44, but I have so much ammo for it that I feel like I should. Come on, come on. It's just six rounds and it reloads so slow. I think I'm gonna be putting this away pretty quick. If you can actually hit your headshots with this gun, which I am terrible with aim, it's actually pretty lethal. You have six one shots. My issue is I was taking these zombies way too lightly. I saw no signs of damage on my door, but I didn't stop to actually check the health of it. And because of this, things are about to get a little bit rowdy. I'm not doing too bad so far. No way, no way, no way. Okay. Oh, I freaking should have been paying attention to that. Uh, I have to really play this safe now. I don't have the time to repair that. The zombies just kept coming. There was no time for me to reload this thing, and it was the last chance I had at survival. The two pistols I had weren't going to do much for me in this situation, so I just had to hope and pray I got an opportunity to reload. I hear you. I hear you. There's freaking vultures now. Damn it, dude. I have to reload. I have one bullet left. All right. I'm just going to go for it. I can survive. I can survive. I can survive. Come on. No, please. Reload. Oh god. I need to heal! Whoo! That could have been so much worse. Back at it, baby! I got about an hour and a half until this is over. Lucky for me, I killed most of the zombies before the end of this, so it started lightening up, I could use my pistol, and I was safe. It's day 29, my friends, and I got hella loot bags. I fought hard, I made it through the night, but now it's time to clean up, gather all of my loot, fix up my base, and continue on with my journey. I went to Joel to pick up another quest, and I was scrolling through his inventory when I noticed that he had a tier 5 steel sledgehammer, which is insane, number one, but it cost 13,000 dukes and I just didn't have that. But I had a plan. Before leaving, I crafted a ratchet and also a steel vault door, so what just happened didn't happen again. I was gonna use my ratchet, though, to break down cars, as many as possible, and then sell all of those parts for dukes so I could buy this sledgehammer. And I did so for a while. I broke down every single car I saw, but my next quest brought me to the wasteland, which would prove to be the most difficult thing I've done so far. Before heading into the quest, I searched this bus and I found a tier 6 steel sledgehammer. I freaking lost my mind. Afterwards, I headed to the entrance. I modded up this tier 6 sledgehammer to become the ultimate zombie killing machine. Luckily, there's an entire parking garage in here because honestly, I've been low on gas since I got this freaking mini bike. I think I'm still like, what is it? 25 books off from getting the chemistry table. So until then... It's gonna be a grind. This thing seems pretty nuts so far. We gotta keep in mind that this is a tier 5 quest. These zombies are a lot stronger. And I'm just one-shotting all of them. Look at that. That These guys are tanks. I'm, I'm What? After traversing through sewage and air ducts, I finally made it into the main part of the building. This was probably one of the most infested quests I've done yet. There was so many freaking zombies here. I feel like they made cops a lot stronger because these are the only zombies that I struggled with throughout this playthrough. I cannot believe that I'm getting this jacked up. What do I have? A freaking abrasion? Okay, abrasion's gone. Bleeding's gone. What is that? I have a laceration? That was a fail. That was a fail. There's a bed. Get away. Not so big and bad when I have a freaking gun, are you? This is probably one of my least favorite POIs that I've run so far, but the one good thing is that there's a booty load of books, like a lot. I think my main complaint about this place is it's very repetitive. Each floor looks exactly the same as the last and it's hard just to be hard. Oh my gosh, yo. There's so many. This is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> okay, and then this gun just absolutely mows them down. 
I don't even know why I get scared anymore when I have this thing. It's only tier four. Floor by floor and zombie by zombie. I fought for my life in this godforsaken tower, not knowing that the hardest part has yet to come. I wasn't keeping count, but I kid you not, at the minimum, I found at least 30 books while I was in here. And after about 40 minutes, I found myself scaling the outer edges of this tower and nearing the end. I just can't catch a break, can I? This is for King Julian! After wiping out wave after wave, I finally made it to this area where there was so many zombies I could barely see the compass. Yo, dude, straight up, this is starting to feel harder than Horde Knight. <laughs> Shit, they just keep coming! Are we done? No, we're not. We're, we'll, we'll never be done. We'll never. And after a full day, I finally made it to the top where there was the most zombies I've seen yet. Okay, I'm um, sorry for that. But now that I have your attention, day 31, I made it to the big loot cache and started grabbing all of it. I'm telling you guys, one day this will feel worth it. I won't just get ammo replenished that I just used, med kits, crappy mods that I already have, mind you. I'm just mad. It was time to go home and get one of the most game-changing rewards I've received yet. It's times like these that make the grind and all of the struggle feel worth it. No. What? I'm absolutely taking the SMG. There's no... But the chainsaw... Wow. Pretty sure I just pooped myself. I wanted to devote all of day 31 to base work because it needed an upgrade. I'm finally able to upgrade this. I used what concrete I had to upgrade all of the cobblestone on the outside of my base, which would take some time, but I'm getting further. I knew in the back of my mind that my zombie walkway in front of my base needed some work. I just didn't know what to do with it yet. So back to the drawing board. Before heading out for the day, I put some points into agility and parkour like many of you have been telling me to, and I I don't regret it. All right, what's my jump height now? Oh, that, that's pretty good. Not the full two blocks yet, but I will get there. I'm just gonna grab these two supply packages first. Hopefully get some gasoline, that'd be cool. Since when do these things drop right next to each other? Love it. Oh my goodness, what's that helmet? Day 32, I rolled out for my next quest, which was bringing me deep into the snow biome, further than I've ever been so far. And the best part of it all is it was a shotgun messiah quest, so hopefully I can find some guns and ammo. Oh, yeah, where are all these zombies coming from? Why are they... Y'all can relax. Bro, are you serious? Wow, that was a great way to start it off, huh? I'm gonna go ahead and skip over this whole first section because unfortunately, the best thing I found was a tier one iron helmet. So there's gotta be some good stuff in there. The next section was the shooting range. I had high hopes for this place. So hopefully I can find something decent in here. We are the shooting range. That is terrifying. Hold on, let me check the meds. I'll use this, I'll take that. This is kind of fun. Oh my goodness. They broke the door. They broke the damn door. What? All right. Let's see how it's got to be. No, 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 no. My goodness. I took the difficulty of this game for granted when I ran my last playthrough with a friend because solo, it's a lot tougher. Okay, why does the loop feel so poo-poo? A lot of you were telling me to test out the stun baton build and other builds, and I promise you guys I will get there, but for now, the steel sledgehammer plus the build I'm running is just the best option for me. It's not because I don't want to change it up, it's because right now I'm trying to put skill points into the sections that are going to let me find workstation books first. And once I unlock that chemistry table, Table, that's when I can explore other builds. Shotgun Messiah does have a lot of zombies, but it's a very quick quest, and that's what I love about it. It's a super short run that has a gigantic loot cache at the end. I mean, bigger than any other POI that I've noticed. Oh, that's a lot of ammo. Is this the final loot room? 
Oh my goodness. The best part is after grabbing all of your loot from the main cache, you go on to the next room and there's even more. At first, I thought people were messing with me, but after putting some points into advanced engineering, no doubt I have been finding a lot more workstation books. Oh, gosh, all right. Yes. Sure. But there's even more? Hold up. Though it's mostly just books and ammo, I will take what I can get at this point because Horde Heights are going to keep getting harder and harder. What do we got? Ammo. Find more Dukes and Loots. There's even more? This place is like the damn jackpot. Okay, well, then that happens. There's just something so refreshing about finishing a difficult POI and then heading home to get really good rewards, hopefully. SMG, another what? It's, it's all now. Oh. All right, no gun. All right, where are we going? Phoenix, Yuma, Las Vegas, or Los Angeles? Day 33 brought me back into the snow biome to run the mausoleum. Back in the day, this was one of my most hated quests because of how confusing it could be. And also, it couldn't have had a worse start. That's fantastic. You just gave me a concussion, bro. What on earth? He gave me everything. You have to follow the routes of this place to the T or you will find yourself lost, no doubt. But with risk comes reward. Look at all these books. Luckily, with the knowledge that I have now, I know to follow these quest routes perfectly and not create my own routes. And by doing so, this quest turned out to be fairly easy. There was two floors and then the final loot room. That's it. Whoa, buddy. Chill. And after killing the rest of the zombies on the two first floors, I found myself in the main chapel. Oh, oh, they're on display. Yeah, this is kind of like Horde Night. Isn't my loot like way up there? After finding access to the rooftop, I had to kill two more zombies and then the final loot was mine. Oh, there's a bird. Screw you, bird. There it is. I'm going to take the stun baton. Y'all been talking it up like crazy. Gosh, the infested is so good. It gives you so much ammo. I know I'm not ready for it now, but one day I will be able to take on that Dishong Tower and hopefully get some crazy stuff. The next day is super interesting because like the dum-dum I am, I forgot that I only had 1% gas left in my mini bike. It was time to go on foot. And sure enough, I was far as hell from home. I decided to make a pit stop at this wedding venue and hopefully get some gasoline, just enough to get me home. Oh! No, oh, no, no, you scared me. It's the wedding party. Oh, that's a screamer. Da, 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 da. But I want to, I want to see what's going on in there. Okay, hold on. This is kind of telling a story, right? The whole wedding party died during their wedding. So they're stupid enough to think that there's not a freaking apocalypse going on. Then we come over here to the changing rooms. Whoever was getting ready in here, let's we'll see what they were taking. They had someone's blood. They had some magazines, some aloe and bandages. They were expecting some stuff to happen because they also had a hood. This person had bones? While being at the venue, I found just enough gas to get back on the road, but I'd have to stop again very soon. I just wish there was another way of making gasoline. The fact that they make it that late in the game. I also dipped my toes into ammo crafting a little bit and I could see myself doing it late game. Crab 96, I need more gunpowder, but that's good. Oh yeah, I have an infection. Hello. In the morning of day 34, Joel's opened, so I went and grabbed my reward, which was a tier 5 impact driver. After doing so, I noticed that he had some rusty barrels laying around, so I checked all of them for that sweet gas. Gas! I will gladly take that. 
Yes. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough to get me to my next quest. And seeing as I only needed a couple more books to unlock the chem table, that's a win. Heading to my next quest, I had two things on my mind. Number one, I still have an infection. And if that gets to 100%, I die. You already know number two, I still need gas. I gotta try to make this quick, actually. I just realized horde day is tomorrow. Give me more gas. So thirsty for gas. That was good. A lot of you tell me to cut down tree stumps, and I know that they have a chance of offering you honey, which can cure an infection. But I've chopped down every single one I've seen, and not one honey. Not one. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time narrating this quest because I'm still a little butthurt about what happened, but basically, the game glitched out. I finished the quest, I killed all the zombies, I got the loot at the end, and it failed me. Whoa, okay. Oh God, how do I fix that? I've actually never had one of those spit at me before. That was terrifying. Day 35, I was still in Coleman's drive-in, but I found the final loot room. It was just, how do I get in there? Okay, the final loot is in there. This may not be correct, but the only path I could find into that loot room was by doing some good old fashioned parkour. After crawling over fences and jumping over gaps, I finally found a door which led me down. Those are dogs. I have a freaking abrasion now. Oh my gosh. Why are there so many? These are wild zombies. These aren't part of the mission. I am jacked up right now. After spending a good bit of time in this place, I finally found the end loot. It was mostly just magazines and ammo, but that's generally how it goes. So uh, at this point, I expect nothing less. Two workstations, yes. Thank you. I'll take that. After grabbing my loot, I killed the last few zombies, got the notification that the quest was complete, and as I was heading home, I noticed that it disappeared. Failed? How did I fail it? That makes literally no sense. I don't know how I failed that. Before going home, I saw there was a supply package nearby, so I headed to that first in hopes of getting antibiotics. This is all before I knew they were super easy to make. Wood cubes, bandages, workstations. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. I can craft anti- I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. All right, antibiotics. Yes, sir. No more infection, finally. As always, right before Horde Night, the zombie count was cranked up. So let's have some fun. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Loot off the bat, look at that. You make it easy. Oh no, my my infection went up. Damn, dude, that infection goes up a lot. Don't break those damn stairs. No. Stop that! All right, my infection's never gonna go away. For some reason, the zombies kept attacking my stairs, and if those break, they have no way of getting to me, and down goes my base. I know what I need to do. I need to adjust that entrance. They're all attacking it so much. You guys need to chill, bro. I'm so close to being finished with this. All right, back to this. Pair. Hurry. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Set 
Please, please. Oh my goodness. Y'all need to have some chill, man. Look at what, why? After seeing my base design continuously fall short, I really needed to spend some time on this thing. That's exactly what day 36 was devoted towards, was figuring out this base. There was a lot of trial and error trying to set up this entry path. Okay, there should be no freaking issues now. Oh no, they're gonna get stuck on that still. The reason they're breaking my stairs is because the zombies running in from the sides can't get onto the stairs, so they start destroying it. So I need to figure out a way for these brainless flesh eaters to get up here with no problem. Unfortunately, there's no way of testing this path until Horde Night, so it's trial and error a lot. What I ended up doing was making my whole path double wide instead of single, and I was going to put walls on either side, so hopefully this would work. What I ended up coming up with was similar to my last design, where I use wedges as the entry walls. That way the zombies, when they run in, are forced to funnel. They have no option. At least... I think it's gonna go that way. But now all I gotta do is put up some bars as walls, throw up some turrets, and call it a day. Normally during base building or base designing, I got sidetracked and I'd go run a quest to fill the time, but not now. I needed to finish this, I needed to get it right. And boy oh boy was it coming together. I've gotten a lot of turrets from packages, so I decided to place those too, but I don't remember if they need power or not, and I also don't know if these Whatever. are too low to work. Upgrades and repairs went into day 37, but I was finally finished. <laughs> no one's breaking through that. After finishing up things in the morning, I headed to Joel to see his inventory because of the restock and he had a crucible. Crucible? No way. I went straight back home to grab a bunch of gear that I've been collecting since day one because I was going to make a big sale. And sure enough, after ditching all of it, I had just enough to get this crucible. I got it. All right, we have a quest. And I also have this treasure map. So I'm gonna hit the treasure map first and then go run the quest. Now I can make forged steel. Being able to craft forged steel on day 37 forward is huge. I have an amazing pickaxe. I have an auger and I have plenty of iron veins around my house. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues with steel. Cement oh, I've unlocked the cement mixer. Okay, I, I need 19 more books for this chemistry station. I don't even care about the crucible anymore. I'm glad I can make cement though. I'm gonna make a cement mixer when I get home. These treasure maps are awesome because they're easy and relaxing. There's not a lot of zombies that I have to kill. All I have to do is dig until the circle gets smaller and eventually I find some treasure. I needed clay anyway, so this kind of works out. What do we got here? Damn! After seeing how good the first treasure map was, I decided to hit the next one on the way to my quest. Oh my Lord. 27,000? You can't make this stuff up, bro. I I'm rich now. I'm glad I got that moment because what I didn't know yet is the next three days were gonna be the toughest. Shamway again? I just ran this. Oh my gosh. This is now my third time running Shamway in this playthrough, and I'm sure it won't be the last, but with that being said, we all know what it's about, so let's speed it up. What? Where are you? What the goodness gracious? Where did all you come from? I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it. Ow. Oh my god, I just killed myself. It's only for your leg. Wait, he has a broken arm. Maybe I should just break my arm and then heal it. I always think I'm prepared, but this game just throws curveballs left and right. Run. Oh my gosh. I just almost killed myself. I'm gonna die here. I'm gonna die here. Hurry up. That was the closest I've come to dying in 39 days so far. Those who watched my first 100 days in this game should be proud of me because as you remember, my decision making was terrible and my on the fly skills were even worse. I could be dying and I wouldn't use a med kit. None of the loot here was really notable except this last chest, which made it all worth it. I mean, tier six steel boots, come on. Since it was already day 39, I wanted to fly home to turn in this quest and immediately pick up another. And it was nothing more than Higashi Pharmaceutical my best and worst friend. You guys ready to get this started? Because I definitely wasn't. What the hell's that sound? 
Where did you come from? Are you serious? That one hits? There's no way. A broken bone, a concussion, and an abrasion from a bite from a... Whatever. I'm screwed. At this point, it was either I waste the rest of day 39 and 40 heading back home so I could heal my broken bone, or I just run this having to walk everywhere. You already know what the answer is. Getting another concussion and an infection. Yes. Okay, that's one thing gone. Day 40, I was obviously still in the Higashi Tower, and my new plan was to find all of the stuff to make duct tape so then I could make a splint. Unfortunately, that means going through every searchable item ever. I find heaps of glue all the time time. There we go. Now that I had glue, I could make duct tape. And with that, I could make a splint and my broken bone is no more. Right. Good gosh, finally. Though the broken bone was cured, I still had to be careful because a splinted leg, whenever you sprint or jump, it increases the duration. Workstations. I need four more. This place was also very good for books. Since I've been in here, I've found seven of those workstation books. But anyways, we are nearing the end of the Higashi Tower already. So let's get to the good stuff. Here we are. This is the top. Look at the freaking radar. That is just so wild to me every single time. Oh, that's no bueno. Oh my god! Why are they so fast? You guys thought I was gonna leave you on a cliffhanger this time. Nah. Show me the goodness. Boom. A tier six military vest, a tier one auto shotgun. A oh goodness. I can tell they're trying to push better loot my way. This, this is so exciting. To finish up my base, I'm gonna need a lot of concrete, obviously. And to make concrete, I need crushed sand, small stones, and cement. And to get cement, I need small stones as well. Like I'm thinking probably 20,000 stone might be a good start to start finishing up this base. Um, I did just get this chainsaw from Joel, which I'm really excited about. But again, I need gas, and I believe I'm still two books off from that. Workstations, yes, I need two more chemistry station or two more books for workstations. Horde day is tomorrow. The zombie count is up to 24 or 26, whichever one is the next step after 16. So that's going to be a lot tougher. Do you have any books or did I already? I think I already bought all of them. Also, let's see how far I am from making a motorcycle. Vehicle is 44. Motorcycle, I need 45. Oh my gosh, I'm literally one book away from crafting a motorcycle. I ended up spending the rest of day 41 mining for stone because I needed it for literally everything on my base. I got so bored while mining that I even made an underground bunker in case I ever got any bright ideas. When I finished mining, I headed back home to throw all of the stone into the forge so it could start breaking it down into cement at some point. To fill the time of the night, I also used what forge steel I had to upgrade my zombie doorway. And then in the morning, I also placed another forge down for faster production. As I was getting ready to leave, I heard a zombie outside and noticed an important issue. Okay, well, I see the issue now. I had to go back to the drawing board and figure out a way for the zombie to be able to get in the actual walkway. And I'm assuming, yeah, they're just getting stuck right here because they wanna, damn it. Okay, I have an idea. Let's break this. It was actually quite a simple change. I feel like I made it harder than it needed to be, but I did a pyramid style with the stairs. That way there was nowhere for the zombies to get stuck. And while I was at it, I noticed my turrets weren't working because I needed a generator. So I made a little cubby for it and then got it wired to each and every turret. After some brilliant engineering, the walkway was finally complete. And now I just needed to upgrade it so it wouldn't break. Some shotguns are only tier two right now. Can I even make that? Forge steel, duct tape, scrap polymers, and spring. I didn't even know if at this point a tier two pump shotgun would be viable, but I just wanted to utilize the shotgun ammo that I had and also use it for backup during this horde night. I'm super worried for this. This is gonna be a very tough horde night, guys. I wish I could have gotten gas for those turrets. That would have helped. I need to start off with this and just conserve ammo as much as possible. Yeah, we're piling up already. This is going to be a really, really long night. The 
The hardest part about these horde knights isn't the amount of zombies. It isn't the fact that they're sprinting at me. It's me having to slowly reload and then repair my weapons. I need more high tier weapons if I have any chance at surviving a horde knight from here on out. They're piling up so fast! Come on, please, please. Bro, there's already massive damage to that forged steel. Hurry up. Where is that guy? No, come on. They're breaking through my walls right there. Hurry up, come on. Go get the shotgun, go get the shotgun. Hurry up, hurry up. Oh my gosh. Ah, this is so stressful. And by this point, I had no more 9 mil ammo. My M60 was broken and need to be repaired, but I didn't have time to do it. All I had was this shotgun. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Keep fighting. Blow up, please blow up. No! I cannot believe they just broke in. No way, he just hit me. As you could hear, I was quite upset. This wasn't a hardcore playthrough or anything because I don't even think they have that option in this game, but I wanted to get to day 100 without dying a single time. And it wasn't until day 43 that that ended for me. That was a very difficult horde night. When the red moon went down and all was calm, I went to grab my gear and then head out on another quest so I could clear my head. I was extremely discouraged at this point. My base was a complete turd. I needed to figure this out. What I should have been doing at the moment was running more quests for better weapons and more ammo, but I headed to Hugh instead. Mr. Hugh, how are you? I was on the search for the last two workstation books I needed, plus the one vehicle book. That would set me ahead pretty far. Yes! There's my workstations that I needed. But after searching through his inventory, I noticed he didn't have any vehicle books, so I was gonna have to earn it the hard way, running quests. Well, first, I was gonna head two kilometers to Jin's and then run a quest if I couldn't find it in her inventory. She didn't have it. Why would she? But I went back home because I was stressing about this damn base design, so I started playing around a little bit. I thought in my head that if I put a roof over my walkway, that zombies couldn't pile up on each other when they're trying to get into my base and be able to get on top of it it too. You shut your mouth. Okay. First thing in the morning of day 44, I headed straight to Joel to pick up a quest, but I wanted to pick up one that was really far away so I could potentially get into the desert. Yep, that's definitely desert. That's good for me. Now that I had my chemistry table, I could craft gasoline, but I needed oil shale, which is in the desert. Oh my gosh, I didn't really, it makes double? Or no, it makes it by fives. That's going to make so much. That's over 5,000 gas. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Can I make a better auger now? I can make tier five augers, say less. Um, dude, we, ha we have our little factory going. I'm super excited to see where this brings me. After some last minute prep and riding all the way out to the desert, it was now time for me to search for oil shale, which is a shiny oily rock. There it is, we are in business. And for the next four hours in game, I would farm oil shale so I could go home with a copious amount and never worry about gas again. And with that being said, I think 12,181 should be plenty. Keep on moving, keep on moving looks like you're having some trouble there miss that's a damn canyon what the hell what is that i'm gonna save that as a waypoint so i can do that later 
I have no idea. I've never seen that. There's like a bunch of mines in the side of it or something. We can make it. We can make it. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. You act like you were underwater forever. Stop catching your breath like that. I see the Dishong Tower. No way I'm running that, right? No freaking way. No way it's making me run that. No, it's not the Dishong Tower. Ah, crack a book. This could be good for me. Here we go. I always underestimate this place. I forget how difficult it is, but I was going to be reminded pretty quick. After killing all the zombies, I searched the whole first floor, which was underwhelming, by the way. I think the best thing I found was these coffee beans. And the second floor was exactly the same. There was plenty of zombies, but not really any loot. Things are a little scary right now. For a crack of book, there's not many books. When I finished searching the entire second level, I remembered there was a ground level that was pretty difficult, so I just had to figure out how to get down there. But for some reason, I found the roof before the ground level, and this got a little crazy to say the least. Whoa, buddy! How the hell did someone get behind me? This script, I'm just gonna jump. Uh, Run and gun, baby. I'm stuck! It seemed like all I did was catch infections this playthrough. Last playthrough, I only got like two or three the entire time. I'm talking like once a day for me. Dude, this game is stressing me the hell out. Though this is a crack of book, I gotta say I was disappointed. The only books that were really here were on the ground level, and there was very few of them. Vehicles, yes! I have the motorcycle unlocked, my friends. All right. Can I please go upstairs now? Oh, I forgot the whole underground section is the last part. Okay, buddy, chill, chill. Oh, I gotta reload. Well, dude, they just keep coming, man. There's a cop behind me. There's a cop behind me, I repeat. There are so many zombies all the time. All right, the rest of the zombies should be downstairs. All right, last guy. Oh, no, last guys are in there. Okay. Bowser's. That was tough. Got another infection, man. I just, like, STIs left and right. All right, here's the final bit. Give me all your ammo. The loot stash here is pretty bad, actually. It's very small for what this place is. Auger! Beautiful. Oh, mama. Okay. All right, quest done. Okay. I mean, honestly, I'm already here. I could just throw all this loot in my bike. Screw it, let's run the Dishong Tower. I think what I'm actually going to do is go all the way to the top and just grab that loot and then head home. I have another horde day in four days, so I can't spend two days in here. I need to prepare. Let me go ahead and build all these blocks. All right, let's start building upwards. I underestimated how many blocks this would take. That was a huge risk. Unfortunately, there was no way around it. I ran out of building blocks, so I had to continue from where I was now. And with this being the biggest POI in the game, you can bet that even the last three floors took me a while. Now, just what have I gotten myself into? This freaking loot sucks. <gasps> oh, that was close. I'm jumping. I'm jumping! What do you want? I could just break in, right? Yes, I could have just broken into that door and grabbed the loot, but I wanted to do this the right way, get all the way to the roof, break in through the roof and grab the loot, and I'll show you what happened. No. No. No!
Oh, I got all kinds of injuries. I definitely needed a better M60 because I was getting overrun on every quest I did, and the melee wasn't cutting it right now. Goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness! I don't remember it being this good! I'm starting to think that when you run a quest, your loot stage is better because I'm in the same area running a harder POI and the loot is terrible. Hello, puppy! Oh, damn. Damn! That was stupid. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like they changed the game the way the loot works. Yeah, I may be wrong, but my last playthrough, I feel like at this point I was finding tier six SMGs left and right. I was finding better M60s, assault rifles. I wasn't just finding books and ammo. I finished my quest on day 45 in the morning and here I am rushing to turn this in at the end of day 46. Well, let's take this, I guess. When I returned home, I immediately started making ammo because I noticed I had a lot of materials for it. That actually worked. And of course, the next thing I wanted to do was test out how much gas I could make on this chemistry bench. At the moment, 250,000 to be exact. While I waited for the sun to rise, I used the rest of the concrete that I had in my name to upgrade my building blocks. I have everything to craft this damn chassis. And then for the motorcycle, I need an engine, a battery, and a wheel, and two wheels. Engine, battery, two wheels. Don't have any engines, but I can easily go get one. After I learned that I could craft the motorcycle, I immediately headed out to go find an engine. It should have been common sense. This engine on my left, if you break it down, maybe you get an engine, but I didn't think about that until afterwards. No engine. Oh. I'm an idiot. You can just break down that stuff for engines. I love it. After scooping up the final piece, I went ahead and crafted the chassis. Cool. Let's get all this concrete going. 1,200. I'm going to need even more cement. They take 20 watts. I only have 10 left to allocate from that generator over there. So I would need another engine. I could make batteries and run the blade traps off this battery bank you guys have to remember the only time i've ever played this game other than now was with a friend so i didn't realize it would be this tough to manage my time between running quest and getting gear and also grinding for resources like you heard me say i wanted to get the blade traps set up on the battery bank that way i had traps turrets and myself to defend horde knights Look at that bad boy. Six batteries. It takes three minutes. That's fine. As you guys can see, day 47 was mainly devoted to making my base a little bit more efficient. Okay. The max output is 174. It took a little bit of engineering, but I got the whole wiring situation figured out. Shortly after, I figured out how I could place down blade traps on either sides and have zombies walk straight through them. And then I can service this crap. But if I turn that on now, is it going to damage the door? Awesome. Everything up to this point was done except the two vault doors on either side, which would be the finishing touch. Here we go. So now I can go out there and service my beautiful stuff. Slice and dice, baby. And now let's watch the beautifulness happen. I love it. Midday, after upgrading the rest of what I could with concrete, I decided to head to Joel and pick up one last quest before day 49. Running a tier 5 POI was a little risky when I had a little bit over a day until Horde Nights. But I got to ride my motorcycle. It's so much faster. Guys, this is so huge. The fact that I think this is bringing me to the Shamway. Bro, I've run Shamway so many times. Is this a shotgun messiah? I've never run one of these. And boy, was I in for a treat. This place was massive. You know how it goes. At the start, you always have the ground floor shenanigans. Kill a couple of zombies. Don't find much, but continue on. You were just ready. The hardest part is I'm an ooh, shiny colors type of person, and I like to loot everything. And this is what made me run short on time. That was fun, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Dude, this place is massive. I've only done the first floor. Oh, hell. Fun stuff, guys. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Tonight's horde night. I need to hurry. I like... I'm always... I'm so stupid. Put myself in the worst situations. Let's go, friends. 
You're not my friend anymore. I was stuck in here for a hot minute, getting jumped by zombies or just straight up lost. This place is one of those that make you think you're almost done every couple of seconds, but then there's just more. After continuously pressing forward, I finally found the materials, but I still needed to clear the area. And after one final push, I found the last area that I needed to be in, which was the toughest. These guys are raining from the sky, man. You know, I take back what I said about the 2-bit tower. There is way more zombies here, and it's a lot scarier. Finally, the final stretch. Here we go. There's my loot. Come on. I don't know this was going to take this long. Please hurry. Take that, that. Read, read. All right. Let's get the hell out of here. No, no, no. After almost falling to what would have been a very lame death, I quickly grabbed my motorcycle and floored it home. Always pushing my luck, man. I was so worried, thinking I wasn't going to make it home in time for Horde Night and I'd get caught with my pants down. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Go inside. All right, let's turn this on. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. I have to do this. Let's turn the blade trap on. All right, we're all set. We're all set. I can't believe I did that. It's starting. I just need ammo. Here we go, baby. Those turrets are shredding them. I want to see what these blade traps can do too. After a very stressful evening, returning home to see that all of my traps were working properly and my turrets were mowing these zombies down was an amazing feeling to say the least. Wow, they're actually making it through. But by the time they get to me, they're super weak. I could probably just use my sledgehammer. That way I can save ammo because by the time they get to me, they're already weak. So what's the point of using ammo? What the hell? How did this cop just snipe me wherever he is? I always talk about conserving ammo and then three seconds later end up pulling out a gun because I get bored. Those turrets are like really putting in some work. I'd say this is going a little bit better than the previous hard night. <laughs> this is so good. I'll eventually get more turrets, more blade traps. Looks like my design finally worked. I mean, we'll see how it pairs up against 64 zombies when that happens. This is extremely exciting. This is a step up from what I was doing before. It looks like they're not having any issues running in here either. I don't see them breaking the stairs like they were. Come on, man. I wanted to see more zombies. Is this it? They can't even make it to me anymore. And just like that, Horde Night was over with ease. We survived the night, guys. And that was probably the easiest Horde Day I've had. Let's see how all these did. Okay, those ran out of, or that ran out of ammo. This one didn't do nothing. My friends, we did it. We've officially reached the halfway point in the 100 days playthrough. Oh, I didn't know there was tier sixes. Oh my goodness. Tier six quest, what does that entail? I thought tier five was the highest POI, or highest tier of POI. Before leaving on this quest, I knew in the back of my head that I really, really needed iron because forged steel is expensive, and if I don't start this soon, I'll never get it done. A couple of in-game hours later, I was at 28,000, which I was comfortable with for the moment. So I went to go throw it all in the forges and then head out on this journey. Well, that's what I thought until I remembered that I have a brand new chainsaw that I wanted to test out, and boy, was this a blast. Compared to day one, I was having a lot of fun. I mean, I started this whole thing out with 
with a hatchet and now I'm just sawing trees down left and right not even using stamina man day 51 one thing just kept leading to another I thought about what mods there were for a drone and I saw that there was a healing medic mod it's a robotic field medic that will automatically heal you as long as medical bandages or first aid kits are in its inventory that's so good. While it was crafting, I finally finished up concreting my entire base. It may have taken 51 days, but let me tell you, I was proud. After doing so, I filled in the roof over my zombie platform going to the front of my base. And once that was complete, now it was time to leave. I had no idea what was in store for me on these tier 6 quests. I don't know why I thought that they would be as easy as all the other ones because they weren't. Nav is gain corrections. I've also never done this. Here we go. After doing a couple of these quests, I realized that the sledgehammer wasn't super viable anymore. It was way too slow and drained my stamina. So with that being said, not today, buddy. Not today. Around day 60 to day 61, I would be completely changing my build. Knuckles and beer, I'm coming for you. What are you doing over there? These quests got so much harder than the tier fives. Every single time I ran into one zombie, it ended up turning into 20. As soon as I kill one wave, I touch one zombie and now there's an entire army after me. I mean, come on. Come on, please. I have a concussion. I'm only one person. What does this game want from me? Look at this. I'm scared. Don't let me die. And then as I was crawling through the ducts of this beautiful prison, this happened. Oh God. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Please. Oh crap, there's more. I'm so screwed. Yeah, me too, boss. Heal me. God. What the hell? And the cherry on top of it all was I wasn't even done with a quarter of this place. It was never ending. After nonstop fighting for my life, I finally made it to the courtyard, which seemed to be the most dangerous of it all. Why are there so many zombies? I never remember there's. Run! <laughs> All right, considering everything, that didn't go too terribly. This next part of the courtyard wasn't too difficult. I had run out of ammo by this point, so I was bound to my sledgehammer, but luckily I had some beer to make it fun. The beer is wild. That hurt. As you can see, beer plus the skill that gives you no blurry vision plus a tier six steel sledgehammer is the most satisfying thing ever. <laughs> beer is insane. The fact that I could have been doing this the whole time, like every quest I've ever done. Oh, uh, I didn't even realize there was a bunch of ammo here. Hello. After finally making it through the kitchen and the courtyard, I was on to the final stretch, which would prove to be the hardest task yet. This really doesn't seem too bad. There's a bunch of jail cells to block these fools off. So where's the difficulty, huh? That's not good. There's a lot. Go look for ammo, I guess. Coming across this final loot cache when I did was perfect timing. I was about to have the time of my life. Please. I did it. I can't believe a nobody like me, a literal nobody who sucks at video games just completed that. Oh my God. And with that, we were on day 53. I was breaking into the hardened chest to grab the last bit of my gear and head back home. Please be worth it. Yeah, bye. 
mean, eh, in all reality, it was definitely worth it. Yes, those quests are hard and it took me two days, but, but getting that final loot cache always feels so good. I wonder if I can get enough experience from upgrading blocks to forge steel to be able to get Daring Adventurer Tier 5. You heard my plan. Though it seemed simple, getting those next three or four levels to unlock Daring Adventurer Tier 5 right. was gonna be pretty difficult. And with me being level 69, each and every level that I got was dreadfully slow. So I'm not getting this anytime soon. These are sugar butts and the awesome sauce. Tier 6 Robotic Grown, Tier 6 Augur. I'm just gonna take the Augur. Yeah, I'd like to get traps on either side of this and then also some more turrets on the outside here. So if I do traps along that, I'm just trying to think of what I could do. For the rest of day 53, I just spent time playing around with my base design, seeing where traps would work, seeing where they wouldn't work, and here's what I came up with. I guess if I have two of those, they should, even if they run down the middle, they're still getting blown up by turrets. Bro, this looks nasty. I mean, these are probably gonna break, who cares? At first glance, this whole killing hallway thing seems sick, and it seems like it would shred all zombies that ran inside. And it mostly did, except for one little fault. See what that looks like. That's nasty. Oh my gosh. The slice and dice, baby. The slice and dice. After spending most of day 54 working on my base and working on traps, I decided it was time to go have fun. As much as I like seeing new stuff, I just already know that I'm not prepared for this. This is the hospital, isn't it? It sure is. Eh, uh, this place sucks. I really didn't like the hospital for a few reasons, but mainly because on every other quest you run, you're getting all the meds you need, so this place is kind of a waste and very boring. Well, boring when it's not a tier 6 infested, I should say. Where did y'all come from? You kidding me? Crap! What are you doing, buddy? <laughs> At this point, I was already in here for over a day. Halfway done, I got about another day left. But you already know, they gotta save the best for last on these quests. That was rude. Level 71. I might get a daring adventure before this is done. Also, I got tired of following the stupid rules, so I found the final loot room and I busted in to grab it all before killing the last two hordes on this mission. Ooh the first one was the hardest. I came out here not knowing what to expect, but damn was there a lot. Unfortunately, being in the pine forest, my loot stage was poo-poo. What you got for me? Books. The lore. All done. So I have about a day to prepare, a little under a day to prepare for Horde Nights. And this is where it all went wrong. So at the beginning of this, you heard me say that I was playing and recording during a little rainstorm. It wasn't even a storm. It was just raining and all went to hell. My power went out. My PC got corrupt, my drive with windows, and I had to bring it into a PC shop where they held it for a week to do diagnostics and also fix the issue. When I got it back, all was fine, except my character had been deleted. So I tried to do some sorcery crap that I saw on Steam forum pages on how to bring your character back from a backup, but it didn't work. So here's that. So one week later, I've gotten my PC back after the the power outage that I had, but I'm just now logging in to seven days to die. And as you can see, this is the account I was playing on. It says day 59, which is where I was when the re when the whole recording crashed. Now I'm going to quickly fly over to where my base was. I think this is the Trader Joel's. I'm going to fly over here. And if my base is gone, I might actually lose my mind. So uh, 
wish me luck interesting so i think what i'm seeing is my base is still there so now i just need to find a way to get my character back i just did some crazy steam voodoo crap to get my my character back we'll see if it works no way bro it didn't work okay well i've given myself xp now i have to go back and level up everything that i had leveled which is going to be kind of difficult for me to figure this out. So uh, I will see you guys when I'm done with everything, giving myself all the books that I had. I couldn't get it perfect, but I did everything to the best of my ability to get my account back to where it was. So here we are picking up at the end of the video. The second bit of footage that I was recording that got corrupt was day 56 through 60, and I'm not going to redo that. I just feel like it would be giving myself an advantage to gain four days of doing quests and all that other stuff. Uh, it's just not fair. The biggest pain out of everything everything was joel's quest here went back to one. Oh my god oh my freaking lordy bro i have a lot of work to do i came to the ultimate decision that off camera i would freeze time and run all of joel's quests until i get them back up to tier six which is going to suck but it has to be done moving into the 60s i had a huge issue that anytime i left my base whether it be on motorcycle foot or anything else this would happen i checked online forums everything i could i dug into the deepest darkest depths of seven days to die and i couldn't find anything other than the fact that it was my drone being stuck in the mesh so naturally i pulled up the command bar and typed in some commands that would clear my old drone and it got worse size and try uninstalling and reinstalling the game i did and it was still just as bad i found out that the only way i could play the game normally is if i started at my base ran a little bit away the game would clear up and then I could play just around my base, but that's it. Dude, that's so stupid. All I can do is play at my base. This is wild, man. Why can I not fix this? And it does it on the other worlds too. It's not just this one. With all of this being said, I didn't want to scrap an entire 100 days video that I was over halfway through. So I decided to do something else. I obviously can't get to day 100, but I can do a couple of Horde Nights that are ridiculously hard. Unfortunately, I only have two more Horde Nights with you guys but we're gonna make the most of it sometimes there's things that happen that are uncontrollable and we just got to make the best of it and that's what i'm doing right now so instead of just completely scrapping this entire video we're still gonna roll with it i'm gonna do day 98 horde day and then after that we're gonna do day 7000 horde day here we go 64 zombies baby i hope i have enough ammo for this actually that's what i'm worried about that's 64 zombies my golly is a lot Hello, Copper Rooney. Whoa, that's a lot, man. Okay, I need to hurry. I need to hurry. Character. Modify. Okay, okay. Oh, my gosh. Damn, we were really shredding through these guys. My traps are helping a lot. This would be a lot harder. All right, reload, reload. Woo! I have a feeling this Horde Knight's gonna go for a long time. Damn, dude, this, this gun does a lot of damage. I forgot how good tier sixes were. Oh, okay. You're done. You're done! Oh my God. Okay, okay, hurry. Holy crap! All right, I'm 60, I'm 60. No, I didn't do that, I didn't do that, no, hurry. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please, please, please. I can't shoot you guys because you're crawling. Oh god, no. There's too many, there's too many, there's too many.
Hurry, please. Hurry! Come on. Come on. Let's go. We got this. Oh, my Lord. Hurry up. Come on. Another heart attack? I can't do anything. I can't. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on, please. There's way too many, guys. There's way too many. My traps aren't doing anything anymore because they're so piled up. Hurry. They made it in. I cannot run this. All right, back to my base. I can't jump up there because I'm out of stamina. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Since I died before 4 a.m., Horde Knight was still going and there was a lot of zombies, so I had to rush over to my loot and clean up the rest of them. I found a little cheese spot that I was trying to get to during Horde Knight where the zombies can't get me, but I can kill them. And then, of course, after it was all over, there was about a trillion freaking screamers because of how much heat I had built up, so I dealt with this for another long time. It's, this is a never-ending cycle because these chicks keep showing up. Okay, now that we're done, my original plan was to do day 7,000 horde day, but I get to build whatever base I want, however I want, with whatever traps I want. I'm gonna build something off a little bit over here. We're gonna have some fun with it. We're gonna go in creative mode and do the ultimate gamer's dream. I think since my playthrough went to hell, I get to do whatever I want at this point, and we're gonna have some fun. So I will do a little building montage for you guys, and I'll see you at the end. Alrighty, my friends, it is about time for us to shift it to day 7,000 for the final horde day of this quote unquote 100 days. So this is what I came up with. Like I told you guys, I was going to go into creative mode and create whatever final base I wanted to make. And it's a killing corridor style, but with a twist. And I have these wedges here. So they funnel into where I want them to go no matter what. So they might get a little bit clogged right here. I'm just going to have to deal with it because... I didn't look up any tutorials. This is just my own design. Basically, they're going to run into here onto this pole. I have a bunch of electric fence posts that are going to shock the hell out of them as they're running across this pole. If they all group up on this pole, of course, some of them are going to fall off. They're going to fall down into this pit where there's a bunch of blade traps. If they make it out, they run back up and rinse and repeat. I'm hoping. And as they're running across this pole, if these fence posts aren't enough, I have 10 turrets on either side that are going to absolutely shred them. We have one more horde day to get through. It's day 7,000 with a 64 blood moon zombie count. My friends, if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these generators on without, hopefully, without getting shocked. I'm hoping this entire design works. It is time to take care of day 7,000. Oh, what the hell's happening? My turrets are trying to shoot them. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness. So they are getting shocked. Unfortunately, my turrets are shooting down there for some reason, so those aren't gonna last very long. We're doing great so far. We just have to get to 4 a.m. and then Horde Day is over. This is wild. Don't have any vultures yet. It's going swell. They're starting to pile up over there. That's already almost broken. 
That worries me just a little bit. This is strange. I wonder if my turrets are actually shooting through my blocks and hitting them. Oh, wow. They are going for my base. My foundation. I love this. This is what it's all about. I got to keep them off that. For some reason, they're attacking that pillar. My design is working, kind of. I want to get in on the action. No, 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 no. I am loving it so much. Let's get some headshots in. Some headshots, baby. Blade traps are still going strong. The zombies don't even have a chance. Now this is a base. <laughs> wow. Engineering IQ 2 million. Yes, I did get to do all of this for free, but still I came up with something that was successful. I was hoping they might at least make it to me and I get into some sort of trouble, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen tonight. I think without all of these turrets, I'd be struggling a little bit more. For some reason, this blade trap is struggling the most, and I think it's because of those jumpers. All right, I'm going to take a sip of my Red Bull. I guess I can go in my inventory and repair my M60. I might even go to the bathroom. They're starting to get weird and attack my base, which I don't love. We made it. We made it. I don't care what anyone says. Even if it ends here, we made it. All right, zombies are starting to pile up down there. Let's, let's chuck some grenades, shall we? And I've just beat the hardest thing ever. And it was easy. What do you say? I don't know. What do you guys say? Let's go ahead and set time to day 7,000 and... What, what, what would it be? Day 7,007 at 2,100. Let's do it again. Let's throw some nades. This is glorious. It's like 4th of July, but with zombies. Kill him dead. Oh, my fence post. One fence post down. We got four more. Oh no, one of them. Another one's broken. We only have three. Oh my God. I just blew up myself. Y'all, y'all have anything cool to show me? All right, more grenades, more grenades. We're, we're piling up down there a little bit. This is so much. Oh, I just blew up everything. Okay. Wow. That sucks. What am I saying? I still have so many turrets though. What's the point? What's the point of even stressing? Well, the durability on my first weapon's almost out. I guess I could switch and say this was somewhat hard. I have an infection? Oh, no, you have an infection. Oh my God, do you guys hear that? It's almost the sound of silence, which means my turrets are almost out of ammo. Just kidding, just kidding. They're nowhere near out of ammo, apparently. Wow, there are so many zombies. My game's starting to lag a little bit. Okay, wow, there's still so many zombies that my game's running at like 40 FPS. I feel like I'm playing Destiny on the Xbox 360. Wow. All right, you guys, I think I've had enough fun, but I would love to give you some type of riding into the sunset beautiful outro, but I can't do that because I can't leave my base area. So I got to get creative. I think this will do. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Your support means so much to me. I love you all and I'll see you next time.